we are recording. Wonderful. So uh, good evening. I'd like to welcome you and call to order the Port Orchard City Council December 8th meeting. And uh, pursuant to the governor's stay safe, stay safe and stay at home order, we will be conducting this meeting via Zoom this evening. And uh, so uh, links to the meeting have been provided on our web page and also phone numbers for the public to call in if the Zoom isn't available to them. So with that, if you could uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are um, to the approval of the agenda. Are there any modifications to this evening's agenda? Council Member Diener, would you happen to have one? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, modify the agenda to add to the consent agenda an excused absence for Sean Cucciardi due to business reasons. Second. So a motion by Councilmember Diener, second by Councilmember Clausen to excuse Councilmember Cucciardi for business reasons from this evening's meeting. Any discussion of that addition? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed to it? Hearing none, that has been added to the agenda, to the consent agenda. Any other modifications or additions to this evening's agenda? And I know Mayor, I move that we adopt the agenda as modified. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion a second to approve the agenda as modified. And in discussion of that, one of the consent items, the contract with the juvenile detention facility, the police chief is listed, uh, the former police chief. So uh, Charlie just plans to put that on our screen and show it to you. Other than that, the, the contract uh, is the same. Uh, thanks to Council Member Cacciardi and Council Member Ashby who uh, caught that yesterday. One of the two of them did. Uh, and uh, so with that, is there, there's a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Did we vote? We voted on that already, didn't we? No, no. we did not vote on the approval of the agenda. Okay. Be voting on the approval of the agenda as amended. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the agenda has been approved. Now we're to our consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, did you want to do citizen comments? Oh, I'm all over the place, aren't I? All right, why not? Um, <clears throat> Let's see, is there anyone from the public who wishes to address the council for anything that's on this evening's agenda? There's a second citizen comment period at the end of the meeting for any topics. So if you wish to address the council, please raise your hand or speak up, either one. Okay, hearing none, I'll close the citizen, first citizen comment period. Thanks for catching that, Councilmember Ashby. I think now we're at that consent agenda. Councilmember Ashby. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would move to approve the consent agenda as modified. Second. A motion by Councilmember Ashby, a second by Councilmember Clausen to approve the consent, consent agenda as modified. Further discussion? Are you, anybody wanting to see the change that Charlie made or are you uh, understand what uh, what needed to be modified there on that uh, juvenile detention contract? Okay, no, I want to make sure everybody's clear. We're clear. Okay, perfect. All right, all in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Hearing none, the consent agenda has been approved. We are to our, we have a presentation next on the uh, community event center. Uh, Mr. Bond, that's you, or are we just gonna hand it over directly to Mr. Rice? I believe we're gonna hand it over to Mr. Rice, but Lori is going to share the presentation or I can also share it, Lori, if you prefer. So Lori. I can share, I can share. Okay. okay. 
Janine, if you would let Lori share her screen. Yep, you should be good to go. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Okay. You see it? Yep, we've yep. got it. All right. Well, thank you, Lori. Hey, good evening, everybody, and um, Port Orchard City Council administrators. Um, Lori and I are really happy be to be here tonight. Uh, I see some members of the CEC Site Selection Committee um, on the call today. That's great. Um, we're here to. Um, show the results of the process that was conducted and the site selection uh, meeting. Um, so we'll just go through this. I, I don't think this will take very long. I'd like to just offer um, a short summary before we flip sides. And one is just to um, highlight for the council that I think the process that we've been through, I would label it with, with three words. And one would be thorough which means that in the beginning, we included a total of eight parcels downtown spread between five different sites with initial exploration on all of them to narrow down to three options. The second word I would use to describe the process is objective. And, you know, the team was charged with performing um, assessments for each of the three site options and that involved everything from preliminary geotechnical to utilities investigation and archaeological look um, preliminary environmental look at each site and the establishment of a permit route which would be used should a CEC be, be chosen for any of the three sites. And then thirdly, um, I would use the phrase that the process was focused on outcomes. The team organized and developed um, a program for the CEC based on best practices, input from stakeholders, partners, and influenced by input from the public outreach process that was conducted as a part of this phase 1b and then we assembled a broad list of criteria that the selection team used to judge how well each site accommodated the goals and objectives for the cec so we could predict an outcome and thereby the quality of a cec on site a b or c we're also cognizant, of course, that one of the objectives is to realize this master plan of which the CEC is one part. So with that, we'll launch into this. Uh, Laurie, let's go to the next slide. You will remember that uh, after whittling on, uh, on the stick, we ended up with uh, site options A, B, and C. I know you're all familiar with where those are. The current Kitsap Bank site, the current library site, and the large parcel that comp is comprised by Kitsap Bank's parking lot, two other smaller parcels, as well as what we know as 640 Bay. Okay, Laurie. And then we conducted the process. Um, I think I remember telling you that Rice Fergus Miller, uh, as a consultant to the city, did not uh, participate in the scoring. We did um, lead the process to take the selection committee, whose names are listed here on this slide, in one setting together um, from top to bottom on the score sheets to take them through each of the criteria points, those deemed most important, where they could score anywhere from zero to 10. And there were 10 of those. Um, important criteria that were worth up to five points, and there were 10 of those. 
And then we also entertained what we would call potentially negative criteria where the team could score negative points from zero to 10. And there were four of those. Um, things like fatal flaws, historical cha um, property challenges, um, uh, any found geotechnical information from our preliminary investigations that looked different than what we assumed in the past, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see kind of how these laid out across there. You, you're familiar with the criteria we visited um, earlier with you and went over them. Um, and so uh, sites A, B, and C were assessed by the selection committee. And you can see in the most important criteria section, site A um, came out ahead. That was also the case for important criteria. And then um, it didn't hurt itself very badly in the uh, potentially negative criteria. So at the bottom, I think we have a pretty resounding um, uh, vote for site A, which is the current Kitsap Bank site. And um, so, uh, Lori, I can't remember. I think there's a little bit more here. Um, we're going to take a quick look at that site A, if I remember correctly. Site A located there. And then, if you recall, this is what a site test looked like, and we're just showing you A tonight. Um, we put the program together and did enough work on the site um, to illustrate those outcomes I was talking about, so that when the committee reached each of the criteria points, they had something to weigh their assessment with. And uh, yeah, I think it was a really smooth process. Um, it, it, it went um, fairly, fairly smoothly. Um, obviously some questions, lots of questions were asked, but we moved through it and the group did a really nice job. Um, you know, again, the arrangement of spaces inside the shell of the building will obviously change when we get into the schematics, but we know here as a quote test to fit that we have a site that I think uh, will serve the city of Port Orchard and the other stakeholders very well were you to um, realize the CEC on this, on this really beautiful and prominent site in downtown Port Orchard. So with that, I think um, we would open it up to questions for either of us, um, uh, as you wish, Mayor and Nick. Uh Council member, I know we've got some stakeholders here. I wouldn't mind calling on uh, that are represented here this evening too. But council members, at this point, do you have any questions of Steve and, and the process? I think it was important. Steve did say it. And, uh, you know, the, what we saw for a rendering is just making sure that we can get all of the elements in there and that this isn't anywhere near a design at this point. So, and I saw council member Ashby raise her hand. Yeah, I just had a question. How much of that site again was DNR land? No. Um, uh, back um, of the site that we used to um, test the building was all Kitsap Bank's property. It's all so, Kitsap, so. Yeah, from from what appears to be the waterside wall of the building to the shoreline is the DNR piece. So the building doesn't sit on the DNR land. The potential any patio or... activity would be yes, yes, okay. yes, that's that is the plan. So, other council members, and then I'd just like to get some feedback from some others. Uh, council member Chang, I see you, you raised your hand. Yeah, I, th I don't know if this was a this was probably answered before, but is Kitsap Bank a willing seller? Well, uh, that was. Uh, I, I very much believe so. We've okay. had conversation with them early on before we tested the site. And uh, I think that's a great segue. I see Tony George from Kitsap Bank happens to be on the call here and, and maybe uh, he could speak to that and, and what his thoughts are on this process. Yeah, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, Tony George, Kitsap Bank. 
Uh, yeah, we're, we're very excited about what can be here. Um, obviously, we own the bulk of the property uh, here on Bay Street, um, but we have our own issues with, uh, uh, you know, our building and part of it being on DNR land. So, you know, we've been here downtown for over 100 years, and this community is really important to us. Uh, we want to stay here, and we're really excited about what can be, and we're looking forward to working with the city. Uh, as we look towards transforming this part of downtown because it, it does has so much potential. Uh, we have some other property that we can um, look to build a new headquarter building on and we're exploring that as we, you know, explore what the city wants to do here with the Community Events Center. So uh, we're, we're very uh, in favor and positive towards uh, redeveloping this whole area. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And I thought I saw Mr. Sego at one point. He represents the, uh, the uh, uh, this, you know, this is a three-legged stool here. It's, you know, the community events, what we've sold to the, the, uh, the idea, the concept we sold to the, um, the uh, Kitsap facility, public facilities district is a master plan project that has housing, the bank's headquarters, and this community center. And, and Steve has one of our pieces of property tied up. And uh, Steve, can I just get your thoughts on, on uh, this and the site selection? Uh, th thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Steve Rice and your team and, and, uh, and Tony and, and your, your comments uh, on behalf of Kitsap Bank. You know, there are, there are three legs to this stool as, as, as Rob uh, intimated. And, and part of that is, you know, the, the the, in, the investment interest, the development interest in the, uh, the residential and parking and uh, mixed use project that we've been waiting to develop around this master plan. And we've been anxiously waiting for the selection process to unfold to make certain that what we were trying to put together resulted in a, a project that was complementary as part of that, that, that third leg. And so we're, we're excited that the, the city's getting closer to uh, making that decision about where the community event center um, will be located. You all know how how much uh, I've, of a role I've had in the, the early days of that process, and I'm so excited that the, the city has taken on the, the public partnership role. But we're here to back and support that, however possible. And um, as 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 Tony has mentioned, you know there are, there are parcels and, and properties. Uh, uh, the 640 Bay Street. There's another property that we also have. Have, uh, we own now is tied up and waiting to to make certain we know where the, the the two other pieces are and so as soon as we know where you know Tony we're looking to you to decide where Kitsap's headquarters is, is going to go and we, we're hopeful and we're anxious and positive about what you're going to do um, but in the in the weeks and months ahead we, we expect to push off pretty quickly to then aggregate the remaining properties and begin the the, the, the commitment that we started years ago to to be a part of this project. So, so we had a, today, just, just to quick update, we had a team meeting um, with our, our project team and I told them tonight, we're gonna hopefully hear some good news about the next step and we're ready to go as soon as, 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 soon as you are. So, um, thank you, Steve. Bye. We're prepared. All right. And I see Jill Jean, the executive director from the library too. And, and hopefully uh, we've uh, just picked the, uh, the site for their new home. So, uh, <laughs> Jill, thank you. Uh, you've yeah. been, you participated in this process from the beginning. So mm -hmm. anything you'd like to share on this? Well, only that I'm just reiterating what Steve and Tony have already said, but Kitsap Regional Library is just extraordinarily excited about being a part of this partnership. And, you know, we have a very good example of this kind of community center up in Kingston. And if any of the council would like to go up and take a peek at that at some point, I'd be glad to arrange a tour for any of you. I know some of you have already made it up there, but it's a, a really nice example of what we're trying to do in Port Orchard. So thank you. All right, thanks, Jill. And then this last thing, I see a couple of other, John Morrissey from the Kitsap Public Facilities District. Thanks, John. He's been uh, with us every step of the way here and represents us up over at the uh, Public Facilities District and, and Port Commissioner Gary Anderson too is an important partner in this. So Gary, thank you for joining us uh, this evening too. I know that's, that's, that's uh, why you're here tonight too, to see, see this, uh, uh, the site selection and, and this process move forward. So thank glad you. To be, glad to be here. Yeah. 
Thank you to all of you. So, other questions or comments from council members? Councilmember Clausen? Yeah, I just want to confirm, I guess, question for you, Tony, that if we select this site, that this will not inhibit your abilities to develop your headquarters in Port Orchard, correct? Yeah, we don't think so. Um, you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but uh, we think the way everything's lined up, it, it should all work out. Lots of details, but uh, no, I think uh, we're uh, as committed as ever to, you know, trying to figure out a new home for us here in Port Orchard. Thanks, so. thank you. Okay, other questions for any of the panel? Wonderful. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you, Steve and Lori, for all the work that you've been doing for us. And I know we have another meeting to continue this process tomorrow. So I look forward to it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, stakeholders. Thank you, Council. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you for your work. Okay, we're going to get on to our, where are we here? We have a public hearing tonight and uh, related to surplusing proprietary property. And this is uh, the clerk's office. So Janine must be handling this this evening. I am. Good evening, everyone. Uh, pursuant to RCW 3594040, whenever the city council determines that equipment originally acquired for public utility purposes is surplus to the city's needs, and is not required for providing continued public utility service, the city council may, by a resolution and after a public hearing, cause such equipment to be leased, sold, or otherwise conveyed. City staff has determined that the equipment described on the attached exhibit B no longer serves a purpose for the city and is no longer required for providing continued public utility services. Therefore, city staff requests that the city council declare the listed items of utility equipment to be surplus to the needs of the city. A resolution is under business items for auction, sorry, for action. Um, and the items listed on attachment B, it's a flail mower attachment, an iPhone, air compressor, uh, McCormick Woods number one lift station, a generator, Golden Pond lift station, and generator, McCormick Woods lift station number two. Um, staff recommends opening up the public hearing. Okay. I'm going to open the public hearing on surplusing these items. Is anyone from the public that wishes to testify at this public hearing? All right, I'm gonna give out a moment, you can raise your hand or speak up if you wish to testify about the surplusing of this public property. All right, hearing none, I will close the public hearing. So we are on to our first item, business item A, and I'm thank you Chief Fawcett um, for joining us here tonight. Uh, we're continuing a discussion about a contract with South Kitsap Fire and Rescue to share funding for a navigator position. And we've continued this a couple times. And uh, Ms. Archer, you've been leading this and I think you uh, actually had some more dialogue with the district's attorney again today. So maybe you can share that uh, with the council too. So with that, uh, go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members. Um, Janine, can I share my screen? Do you mind? Thank you. Um, as the mayor mentioned, this is the navigator contract um, that we've touched a few times as a council. Uh, the city is um, hiring an employee to serve as a, a navigator position and that employee via a, a contract with the fire district, um, the fire district will uh, pay a portion of that salary um, and the costs associated with that position in exchange for um, the city loaning out that individual on, a, um, on terms set out in the agreement. Um, the terms have all remained the same, but in response to some additional um, comments, we've revisited the provision that, that um, this is cost sharing. You'll recall uh, when this issue was originally discussed with the fire district, it was um, a flat fee. And through negotiations, we are now at a place where the district's attorney is comfortable with a modified um, provision that uh, now accounts for the fact that this individual is um, 
it within a bargaining unit at the city so that the, the compensation for this individual is commiserate with the, the bargained rate. Um, and uh, I want to caveat this by saying that the fire district has not approved this language. It is merely their legal counsel that has. Um, the legal counsel understands that he will be presenting this to the fire district at their meeting on Thursday. So um, we can, as a council, discuss this this evening. Council can choose to take action on this, e this evening. Um, but I do want to flag that for you because oftentimes we wait until we have the other side's approval before we approve as, as um, the city's common practice. So let me share that modified language here. Um, so you'll see this used to say this amount shall not exceed $65,000 annually, provided that there was a, uh, uh, an increase of the CPI after the first year. And now on a, an annual basis, the parties will essentially revisit the value uh, and the value is um, subject to change based on what the collective bargaining agreement rate, whatever step increase or, or uh, modification that the collective bargaining agreement applicable to this individual calls for, but up to a cap 3% increase on that uh, base amount. Um, on an annual basis. Um, that, that's a, the request of the district's attorney. Again, not the district's board. They haven't seen this yet, but the district's attorney. So this is the language that um, we've discussed and uh, there have been no other modifications to the agreement since the version you saw last week or two weeks ago, two weeks ago, sorry. Chief, have you heard of these, Chief Fawcett, I should say, we got two more chiefs here. Uh, have, is this, if, has your legal counsel been in contact you, with you about these changes and what are, what are your, uh, I guess, thoughts on that? Well, and, and just to caveat that, make, you know, we don't want to require that you speak to privileged con conversations with your okay. attorney. Chief. Yeah. All right. I am aware. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Charlotte. Uh, I am aware of this and uh, I will be comfortable presenting this to the board of commissioners on Thursday night. And uh, I think that this, I appreciate all of your work on this, and uh, this would meet, I believe, our board's uh, intent of what we're trying to do in this project. Okay. So with that, I guess we have two options. We could vote uh, and with the agreement not that hasn't been approved, or would you prefer to punt this another week and wait for the fire districts board to vote on it first. Those that would be the, the two alternatives. Councilmember Clausen. Yeah, I have a question, not so much on whether we should take action or not, but in the agreement, it indicates that we will split the 50-50, the, uh, the total cost of compensation, and you, with your modified language, indicate the potential increases to wages what about the potential increases to the benefits, i.e. the price of health care just went up 10%? Is that captured somehow in this agreement, if it would, as a result, exceed 3%? No. Can you put that back up again? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm happy to. Uh, no, that's not captured. And again, I'm, I'm going to describe the the process as far as I understand it. So when this arrangement was negotiated originally, it was a 50% split with an annual cap of $65,000. So there was never contemplated an increase of any kind. Um, and then uh, a CPI increase was contemplated as the next round of negotiations. Um, I don't wanna get too far into the negotiation process because I don't wanna inadvertently waive privilege, but um, at no time was there a discussion with regards to the medical, with regards to making this an even 50-50% split on the actual um, all-in cost associated with that employee. If that's well, the case, if, with the first sentence of 3.1, it indicates that it's 50% of the total cost of compensation. Correct. For the individual hired. Now, I guess then, you could define total cost, but in my the experience total cost includes wages, benefits, and so on. Correct. And then the next sentence that was negotiated or not negotiated, but came from the fire district was that it would be capped at 65,000. Yet there's a provision though to increase at 65 by no more than 3% dependent upon the negotiated increase. 
Correct. That's the latest insertion that we have asked for. Yeah, we are happy to ask for for further to the extent that, that that's the council's desire. But um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to walk you through the process just to see where we've ended up and where we can go into the future. So we started with that 50% but capped at 65. I don't know the origins of that. I believe it was the district. Then we pushed back and asked for a CPI. And now we're at a place where we're asking for additional and the district has pushed back right towards us and said, that's fine, but, but with a cap of 3%. Thank you. Other questions uh, for Ms. Archer on this? Councilmember Lucarelli? Why wouldn't we ask to have um, the benefits included for sure beyond 3% if they need to be? We well, it is our employee and they're offering to share the cost up to a certain amount of the cost of that employee. It's not, you know, and initially it, I think it was previously this employee was part of a grant and a program at Paul's Bow. And through our budget process, we're hiring, this now is now our employee because that grant went away. And uh, in hindsight, we should, you know, we should have done a better job of uh, talking through this process and, and potentially having this at a work study. Uh, but unfortunately that ship sailed, you know, a couple of months ago. Um, but um, we can ask whatever the council wants, but this has been a negotiation between Ms. Archer and the district's attorney uh, to this point. As she pointed out previously, there weren't any escalators in it. This is a three-year agreement. Um, at the end of three years, we have an opportunity to evaluate the program and uh, negotiate a new contract if wages and be if benefits get too far out of whack from the, the cost that, that we're re recovering. And and I would I would add to that I think to the extent we want to continue down this line of conversation I'm happy to do so but I do think we should go into executive session because this is a legal risk um, related to negotiating the contract it's, you know essentially you don't want to show your cards with the um, other party on the agreement in the open meeting um, and there's a basis to do so if the council wants. Is there a desire to go into an executive session? Mr. Mayor, if this is the only way to continue the discussion on it, then yes, I would ask that we go into an executive session. Before we do that, um, the agreement, the interlocal agreement that we have before us tonight has some other changes in it that I believe Charlotte went over last last meeting from the original one that we that was presented to us and i didn't know whether council wanted to review those or not or just look at um this particular section i guess i'm feeling a little um uh, i had um had questions and have discussed them um, with the attorney and with the mayor. And, and a, a lot of those are reflected in this document. And I did not know whether you guys wanted to know what those were to review those or not. They were all pretty, I don't want to say minor, but I don't believe there was any difficulty um, getting the provisions, um, the, the language changed to tighten it up a little bit. Right. And I'm happy to pull that other version up if, if there's interest in seeing those changes. It may take. I don't me think a those are protected time. under an executive session. So they're not. No, it'll just take me a minute to find that version. I don't see them, I, but I have them in track changes. Um, 
but I would say to the extent we can um, not delay while I dig around on my computer, we, we could go into the executive session and I could um, continue to look for those and we could discuss them when we come out, if you'd like, Mayor. Okay. If there's, or council, if council's interested in the exact session. So Janine, I'm gonna test your Zoom skills here. You're gonna send myself, the six council members, Noah and Charlie, and Chief Brown, I, do I see Chief Brown, uh, into a breakout room. Okay. <laughs> now, do I stop recording or do I just do the breakout no, room? Leave it, leave it alone and keep it recording and you're gonna create a breakout room. So I'm sorry, what was that? There was a car passing by. You're gonna, you're gonna leave the recording going and okay. you're going to create a breakout room. And those of us that are going to the breakout room, breakout room will get a box and we click on it and we magically teleported to another place. <laughs> I will try my, okay, so create breakout room. Yep, and then you're gonna select the participants. Okay, so I'll do manually. All right, I'm gonna click okay. on create. Oh, room. hold on, don't, don't create yet, don't, sorry. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> it's pursuant to RCW 4230 uh, one subpart I, um, subpart little three, uh, litigation or legal risks of a proposed action. Um, and it would be for approximately five minutes uh, with no action to, or with action to follow? I'd okay. say probably 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, let's go with 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. It'll take us five minutes to get there. <laughs> We're like five minutes to get back. <laughs> oh, look at that, okay. So, Beck, Charlie, Cindy, sorry, I probably shouldn't talk to myself. <laughs> Go ahead if it helps. <laughs> and so you said Noah and Brown and, and Charlie. And Charlie. Okay. So I am going to, yeah, we'll see what happens. Nice knowing you. <laughs> I see Fred Chang still. Did you forget Fred? Oh, there's Fred. Okay. Good job, Janine. Thank you. <laughs>
Hi, everyone. So the executive session is going to be extended five more minutes.
The executive session's been extended five more minutes. Did you really think that it was only gonna be 10 minutes? <laughs> what was that? Did you really think it was only gonna be 10 minutes based on the conversation they had before they went into executive session? Um, no comment. <laughs> I remember, it was only going to be five. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was very optimistic. So anyway, it's all good. No, all right. You're the eternal pessimist anyway, Mark. What's that? I said you are the eternal pessimist anyway. I'm not a pessimist. I'm an optimist with experience. Maybe more like a realist. I'm a realist, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, that, that we can agree on. Mark, I think I'm going to have to remember that. An optimist with experience. That's, that's got staying power. It does. <laughs> it's, it's, it gets wet. It's it washes away all that negative connotation of being a pessimist. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a certain level. I mean, I've only been doing what I'm doing for the last six months. So at some point, I'm gonna have to get that experience before I'll be able to pull that card. But when I do, <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got the operational uh, soot on you. You just have to get the political soot dumped on you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They and they they can't teach you that. <laughs> No, no, they can't. So anyway, yeah, an optimist with experience is, is how you spin that. Uh, we'll get Sounds there. like a bumper sticker. Yeah. yeah. At least a hashtag on your email. I mean. Okay. <laughs>
You're muted, Mayor. All right, sorry about that. We're back in open session and uh, we're con continuing continuing with the discussion related to the contract with South Kitsap Fire and Rescue to share the funding for the, a community health navigator position. Councilmember Mayor? Ashby? Yes, I move to authorize the mayor to execute the interlocal agreement between the city of Port Orchard and the South Kitsap Fire Rescue to share funding for the community health navigator position. Second. A motion by Council Member Ashby and a second by Council Member Clausen to uh, approve the, allow the mayor to sign the execute and sign the interlocal agreement with South Kitsap and Fire and Rescue for the navigator position. Any further discussion of this item? Council Member Diener? Uh, I'm excited to see this person come on board. Uh, and I'd like to hear about how the program has gone and the, and the position has worked in one year's time. So I'd like to get a report and, and just learn how it went in that year. I think we all would. So that's a, that's a good ask. And I'm seeing both chiefs nod their heads. So I, th I think we can make that happen. Okay, and uh, other comments or questions? I just, well, yeah, I also wanna thank the uh, fire district for their, uh, participation in this and the willingness to share in this. Uh, these are, this is much needed in our police department. I know at the fire district also to, uh, to have these types of services to help people with addiction and uh, mental illness issues that uh, in our community. So if there's no further comments or questions, uh, you'll be voting on executing this interlocal agreement. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? I, hearing none, the ILA is approved. So we are on to a bit of a celebration here. And I'm sorry, uh, Deputy Chief Schuster, you had to wait so long, um, but uh, you've been around a few years. So uh, what well, was a few more minutes? So uh, Chief Brown, uh, this is yours. Yes, uh, I'd also like to thank the council. I know that, uh, been a long process on the navigator and I appreciate all the input because we want to get it done right the first time. So thank you. Um, before I read my staff report, I do just really want to thank uh, Dale, both professionally and personally for, for sticking around uh, the last 18 months. Um, he really, did, he had an opportunity to retire and he chose to stick around and uh, that meant a lot to me personally and professionally and a lot to the department as well. Um, it's been uh, bittersweet watching him the last few weeks as he's slowly cleaning his office out. So I'll, I'll get right to it, but I appreciate uh, the council members time and the mayor allowing me to, to present this. So uh, on September 25th, 1985, Dale Schuster began a long and successful career serving the citizens of the city of Port Orchard as a peace officer. His work ethic and attention to detail were recognized by coworkers, supervisors, elected officials, and citizens resulting in his promotion to detective, sergeant, and eventually deputy chief of police for the city. His 35 year municipal law enforcement career resulted in a strengthened police department known for its community commitment. And his personnel file is brimming with commendations, recognitions and letters of praise for jobs well done. Deputy Schuster's unwavering professionalism, positive attitude and strong personal work ethic will live on through those he mentored and he has earned the admiration and respect of our community for his many years of dedicated service to the city of Port Orchard and justly deserves the very best in the years ahead. So staff recommends adopting a resolution honoring Deputy Chief of Police Dale Schuster as presented. Councilmember Ashby. Yes, I would move to adopt a resolution honoring Deputy Chief of Police Dale Schuster as presented. And I will also just mention that I happen to be on the Police Civil Service Commission when um, he was uh, uh, hired by this city. So it's been a long time. Thank you, Dale, for your dating yourself. Yeah, I, I, would, I would second that resolution. And I would note, Dale, like Becky, um, you came on two years and nine months after I came on as a council member. So um, I've enjoyed you being a part of the city for all these years. And if the council and the mayor would permit 
I would be honored to read this resolution into the record um, so that it's uh, part of the video record as well. Go ahead, Councilmember Claussen. So resolution of the city of Port Orchard, Washington, honoring Deputy Chief of Police, Dale George Schuster Jr. for 35 years of dedicated service to the city of Port Orchard, whereas on September 25th, 1985, Dale Schuster began a long and successful career serving the citizens of the city of Port Orchard as a peace officer. And whereas Deputy Chief Schuster worked ethic and attention to detail were recognized by co-workers, supervisors, elected officials, and citizens resulting in his promotion to detective, sergeant, and eventually deputy chief of police for the city of Port Orchard. And whereas Deputy Chief Schuster's 35-year municipal law enforcement career resulted in a strengthened police department known for its community commitment and Whereas his personal file is brimming with commendations, recognitions, and letters of praise for jobs well done. And whereas Deputy Chief Schuster's unwavering professionalism, positive attitude, and strong personal work ethic will live on through those who mentored. Now, therefore, the City Council, the City of Port Orchard, Washington, hereby resolves as follows that Dale George Schuster Jr. has earned the admiration and respect of our community for his many years of dedicated service to the city of Port Orchard and justly deserves the very best in the years ahead. Passed by the city council, the city of Port Orchard, signed by the mayor, council members, and attested by the city clerk in authenticity uh, of such passage this eighth day of December, 2020. All right. Others wishing to, uh, congratulations, Dale. I, uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. My time is, is the mayor. Councilmember Rosa Pepe, do you have something to share? No, just being a newbie, uh, congratulations, Dale. It's been a pleasure working with you on Jingle Bell Runs and other items. Uh, what are your plans? Oh, I have uh, a lot of things to get done around the property here, working on cars and working on the 33-acre the stump ranch. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Best wishes to you, Dale. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, Councilman. When's your last day in the office? Well, my last day was actually uh, November 19th. I'm on terminal vacation right now until the end of the year. My official last day with the city will be December 31st, and my official unemployed day will be January 1st. Okay, well, if you come back to City Hall, swing by. Of course, Mark. I appreciate everything you've done. You've been a great colleague, so thank you. Thank you. All right, we, uh, other comments? All right, with we that. Might call for the question. All right, thank you. You'd be uh, voting on the adoption of a resolution honoring Deputy Chief Dale Schuster. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? You better not be. <laughs> <laughs> no one is opposed. The, the uh, resolution passes unanimously. Con congratulations. I want to thank uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, City of Council members. Uh, it's uh, really been a pleasure to serve the City of Port Orchard and its citizens over 35 years. It really has been an honor. Best wishes, Dale. Thank you, sir. All right, we're on to item C, adoption of a resolution approving an agreement with Oak Ridge Homes to, uh, for the payment in lieu of construction uh, specific performance. Mr. Bond, this is you. Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of Council. The conditions of approval for the Blueberry Ridge subdivision obligate the owner, Oak Ridge Homes 2 Limited, to construct a temporary signal at the intersection of Blueberry Road and Bethel Road Southeast as a condition of, uh, as a condition prior to final plat approval. Due to transportation improvements made in this area since the Blueberry Ridge plat was approved in 2007, the city has determined that there is no longer a need for the temporary signal at the intersection of Blueberry and Bethel and prefers a roundabout to be constructed at Blueberry and Bethel as the long-term transportation solution for this intersection. Port Orchard Municipal Code section 20.98030 and RCW 58.17130 
provide that the city may deem a condition of the preliminary plat satisfied where the applicant post adequate security commensurate with 150% of the engineer's estimated cost of the improvement. Oak Ridge and the city have agreed that Oak Ridge will deposit 234,232.50, uh, which is 150% of the estimated cost to construct a temporary signal. And the city will use the funds towards the planning design permitting and or construction of a permanent transportation solution at that intersection. The staff recommendation is that the city council adopt the attached resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the attached agreement with Oak Ridge Homes II and for the payment uh, in lieu of construction of specific performance. Council Member Diener. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Oak Ridge Homes II Limited for payment in lieu of construction specific performance. Second. Motion by Councilor Diener, a second by Councilmember Rosa Pepe. Any questions for Mr. Bond on this matter? We'll be uh, able to use these funds likely uh, not next year, but the following year and to help with the design of that uh, phase one uh, of that corridor. So with no further questions, we'll be voting on the resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Oakwood, Oak Ridge Homes Two limited. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, the motion is approved. We are to item C here. D, uh, adoption of a resolution declaring certain property proprietary funds, uh, certain uh, surplus, equipment is surplus. This is uh, you, Janine, and this is the public hearing that we had earlier. All right, good evening. Um, assets of the city that are no longer usable are no longer a value to the city or are surplus to the city's needs may be disposed of pursuant to the provisions of Port Orchard Municipal Code 1.30.020 upon a declaration by the city council that such assets are surplus to the needs of the city. Personal property that city staff has determined to be surplus to the needs of the city is described on attachment A. RCW 35.94.040 requires a public hearing prior to disposable equipment originally acquired for public utility purposes. The proprietary funds, water, sewer, storm drainage equipment that city staff has determined to be surplus to the needs of the city is described on attachment B. A public hearing was previously held for the disposition of the proprietary funds, water, sewer, and storm drainage utility equipment described on attachment B. See, proceeds from the sale of surplus property are deposited into the fund that own the equipment or personal property. When disposal is to the general public through direct sale, sealed bid or auction, final determination of value shall be the highest responsible bid or offer. The city may transfer a surplus asset to another public agency upon written request and a determination that is in the public interest. Uh, staff recommends adoption of a resolution declaring certain personal property and utility equipment to be surplus to the needs of the city and directing its disposition. Council Member Rosa Pepe. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution declaring certain equipment surplus and authorizing this disposition. Second. Motion by Council Member Rosa Pepe, a second by Council Member Lucarelli. Are there any questions for Janine regarding this matter? It's pretty straightforward. Okay, you'll be voting on declaring certain proprietary assets as surplus. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Hearing I think none, you should have Janine read the whole list. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just kidding. <laughs> trying to make up for the executive session. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. We're at item E, adoption of a resolution ratifying emergency purchases uh, of supplies, equipment, and services for COVID relief made during the declared state of emergency. Ms. Archer, this is you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Council, before you this evening is a resolution ratifying emergency purchases that were made for COVID-related supplies, equipment, and services during the declared state of emergency. You'll recall that the mayor issued a proclamation of local emergency on March 16th, 
then extended that proclamation on June 16th and again on September 13th, and that proclamation currently expires December 31st of this year. At each phase, those proclamations were ratified by you as a body. Um, at the time of ratification, it was referenced that um, the proclamation itself gives the mayor power um, and the, the laws cited within the proclamation gives the mayor power to direct staff to make necessary purchases that are focused on addressing and uh, fighting against the COVID pandemic um, without uh, compliance with uh, strict bidding and public notice requirements where applicable, where that threshold uh, amount has been uh, reached. So um, only once that, that threshold has been reached. Um, and that when we brought the uh, proclamations to your attention for ratification, it was referenced that any of those purchases would be brought back to you for ratification as well. And so that you were notified that those purchases had occurred. So before you this evening is a resolution ratifying uh, those purchases. Um, for aid and ease of staff, this document and exhibit A to the resolution lists all of the purchases regardless of monetary amount. So some of these were not subject to uh, bargaining rules, or uh, not bargaining, excuse me, bidding or procurement rules because of their size. Um, but those that are over a threshold um, would have required your action beforehand, before the purchase was made, but for the emergency condition. So. Um, the list is somewhat lengthy of the purchases. I believe um, the city has been itemizing using a particular budget number for COVID related um, purchases. Uh, but they, it, the list should give you a, a clear indication of what purchases were made and the costs are on the right hand side for each. Um, and I'm happy to stand for any questions. I may defer many of those to staff who made those purchases. But. Yeah. And Noah, I think you could probably speak to this this, we use the CARES money to make these purchases, if, if I'm not mistaken, the funding source for most of these purchases, most if not all. Yeah, most if not all of these purchases we, we use the CARES funding for. And at this point, we have fully exhausted our CARES funding. So Council this Member, is, the, this is the list that you want to have read. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. I move to adopt a resolution thereby ratifying the procurement of emergency goods and services during the declared state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Lucarelli, a second by Council Member Chang. Any further questions about these emergency purchases? All right. And you can see a lot of it, teleworking equipment, modifying workspaces, you know, our, um, so on and so forth. You're getting, we were, you know, um, six months ago, we were getting City Hall ready to reopen and then that didn't happen, but we're still ready to go and have all the equipment and safety precautions in place. So with that, you have uh, a motion on the floor, all in favor of approving the, the uh, resolution, ratifying the emergency purchases, please say aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, the resolution passes. Uh, we are to our last business item, which is the approval of a mem memorandum of understanding with the police guild representing sergeants regarding the promotion of Sergeant Donna Main out of the bargaining unit. Debbie Lund, I think you're here this evening. I am. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. Um, as you just recognized, Deputy Chief, uh, Deputy Chief Dale Schuster for his many years of service, uh, Dale's departure presented an opportunity to Police Chief Matt Brown to fill that position. So earlier this year, the chief extended an offer to Sergeant Donna Main for the position of Deputy Chief. That then entered the city into a series of negotiations with her current union, the Sergeant's Union, because the current contract with the Sergeant's Union does not address um, promotion of an employee out of the bargaining unit. The contract addresses departure of employment, um, of an employee from employment with the city and how to handle their leaves, but not the promotion to another non-union position. So the city and the guild negotiated those issues um, and you were emailed a document from Ms. Archer on Friday afternoon with the memorandum of understanding that we have reached with the guild representing the sergeants. 
And we're asking you to authorize the mayor to sign that agreement, um, treatment of Donna's leaves as she transitions into a non-union position, which would occur January 3rd, 2021. And happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, questions for Ms. Lund? Is there a motion? Councilmember Claussen. Mr. Mayor, I move to authorize the mayor to sign a memorandum of understanding with the police guild representing sergeants relating to the treatment of accrued leave upon the promotion of Donna Main out of the bargaining unit and into the position of deputy chief. Second. A motion by Councilmember Claussen, and I think that second was by Councilmember Rosa Pepe. Questions of Ms. Lund regarding this matter? And just Quite pleased that uh, we have someone of uh, Sergeant Main, now Deputy Chief Main's uh, caliber within our ranks. And uh, I've known Donna for many years. Uh, she's, uh, you know, grew up uh, in with uh, around our family a bit, friends with my sister. And uh, so I know what kind of person she is. And I'm very thankful that uh, she works in our police department and, uh, and when we're promoting her. So with that, uh, all in favor of uh, approving this memorandum of understanding, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, the memorandum of, of understanding has been approved. We're gonna have a, a, a discussion item this evening about CFC credits since we're not having a work study. And it says Mr. Bond, but I think Noah's gonna walk us through some slides. Uh, that show our current methodology. Uh, and then I'm gonna lead a little discussion and then uh, look for some direction from the council. So go ahead, Noah, if you wanna share your screen. Okay, so hopefully uh, you all can see my screen it should say sewer capital facility charge on it. And just moving some icons around here. Okay. So tonight we're going to briefly review uh, the council's work, the city's work over the last year on the sewer capital program uh, from updating the sewer capital improvement plan, which led us to update our capital uh, our sewer capital facility charges and leading us to tonight's nice. discussion regarding the sewer credit model. As, uh, as the public works department worked to update their general sewer plan um, early in 2020, uh, in, which they they, in which they reviewed our entire sewer system, they identified that we needed to update our sewer capital improvement plan as well and the capital facility charges. On this slide here, we have our updated super capital improvement plan totaling $26 million, of which we've identified the amount of these facilities attributed to growth to be included in the calculation of the sewer capital facility charge, uh, amounting to $20 million. In that body of work, uh, they, uh, they identified each project's portion attributed to the growth and that amount was to be included in the CFC calculation. Again, the total is $20 million of total capital construction to be attributed to growth and thus paid for from sewer capital facility charges. This slide reviews the inputs, the inputs to calculate the CFC. In this table, we can see we included the $20 million of sewer capital construction to be attributed to growth we include the estimated value of our current facilities at roughly 35 million. And the summation of those two um, factors equals $55 million. To the left, we identify the assumptions used uh, to establish the denominator in the equation. Uh, this is 6,612 ERUs when an ERU equals one connection. So taking the numerator of the 55 million and dividing by the denominator of the 6,612, we arrive at a total of 8,399. On top of that, we add our BNO tax estimate to arrive at a total capital sewer capital facility charge of $8,512. So 
So next we want to review the current Port Orchard Municipal Code on sewer, and this also applies to water credits as well. Uh, the language and the calculation applies, it's just uh, based on the different capital plans and the determined proportionate share to growth. Uh, but what we're talking about tonight is sewer. So in this example for both sewer and water credit, the proportionate amount of the sewer capital facilities charge that is attributable to the sewer facilities, either constructed by the property owner or paid through a late comers fee shall be the credit. Thus, to calculate the eligible credit per project, yeah. we use the percentage proportionate share of each project, which was used to calculate the sewer capital facility charge. And again, you can see that those uh, capital dollars on the prior slide. Uh, with each project's proportional share identified, we then calculate the credit amount in $2 for each project as displayed in the far right column here. Um, for example, Project 65D, the Sydney Second Force Main Project, that project represents about 3% of the overall sewer capital improvement plan cost used to create the CFC. Uh, project 65D is eligible then for 3% of the CFC charge, or uh, the credit would be roughly $233 of the $8,525 sewer capital facility charge. Uh, so we thought this would be helpful, again, because I kind of flew through those kind of quickly so we could have the discussion. But we wanted to put together an example to illustrate a little more clearly as we walk through an example of the potential credit available for a project. So in this example, we are using that Sydney Force main example uh, we are making the assumption a developer uh, comes to the city and submits a request to build the city force main and, they, and part of that request is to receive a credit. The city council and developer signed and come to a developer agreement. The developer completes uh, the, the infrastructure and deeds it over to the city at which time the city would then begin issuing credits for those uh, connections associated with that improvement. So in our example, we're assuming that the development is roughly a 250 unit development with 250 connections. We have an assumed cost of $1.537 million. Uh, again, that is the project cost that was used in calculating uh, the CFC charge on the capital level. And then the, again, you'll find the builder's credit per connection at $233. So for this particular project, if 250 units uh, do come in to, re to request the credit. Uh, the total amount of credit that will be uh, booked is roughly $58,000 uh, for this project. So I kind of want to pause there and give the council a chance to kind of ask questions and discuss and maybe kick it over to the mayor uh, to further elaborate. Go back two slides. Two. Uh, three. Three. I want to see the, the breakout there. Okay. So here we had the Sydney Force Main in, the, in our example. The total cost of that project is $1,537,500, of which we've identified 100% is attributable to growth. And so 100% of that is going to be used in the calculation for the CFC. Now, I think it's important to mention not all projects have 100% um, of that cost attributed to growth. Um, for example, the marina pump station here, it was uh, identified that 50% of that uh, should be used in the calculation. So 50% is for the CFC with the other 50% coming from operating rate revenue. If I may, I can kind of put some context to this. You know, in this, this, in this fictional example uh, you saw, a $58,000 credit on a $1.5 million project. In the real world, it's likely a lift station, and those lift stations are between two and a half million and $5 million each. Uh, and a typical development project is in the range of 50 to 300 units. At, for example, we took 250. So the credit would be about the same, but the investment we're typically asking for is far greater. Um, using the example we used tonight with the 250 unit development, 
the, the developer, we would be asking the developer, if, if we haven't made these improvements already, if they need them for their project, we'd be asking them to make that investment of that $1.5 million, still pay the $2 million in connection fees, pay the water connection fees, the traffic impact fees, the park impact fees, and then their sales tax on, on that construction. I really see three options going forward. The first option is the status quo and, and in doing not touching this code at all um, and waiting for developers waiting for us to collect sufficient connection charges for, and, uh, for us to build this infrastructure. They, we all know that our number one sewer project right now is the marina pump station. So these projects in the Ruby Creek area and the Bravo Terrace, if we can't find a, a meaningful way to give credit for them, are going to have to wait a number of years because no one's going to pay, like no one is likely to pay the cost of that construction and then pay the full impact, the full connection charge also. An alternative would be for the city to go and borrow the $20 million and build out our capital uh, plan. Uh, this scenario puts the uh, puts the development risk on the city. And then we would need that connection charge revenue to pay the debt. Uh, you know, unfortunately, when the next economic downturn comes around, it would be our rate payers luckily, likely being stuck paying for that debt service. So I'm, I'm not advocating at all for that scenario. A third alternative is, for, is the development of a meaningful credit program that could provide incentives, incentives for the develop, developer to build these capital projects. We can't afford to give away the farm, but, the, but we need to look, and we need to look at these credits holistically. Um, if, if we pri provide the, these incentives for the sewer, it's likely that the developers uh, will need to provide these same accommodations for, on the water side. And, and I'm not looking to solve this tonight. Um, I'm just warning anything, Nick uh, has been working, you know, down in the trenches of this he's got applications coming from folks that want to build out in these areas and he, he's raised this question to, to Noah and I and Charlie and based on our current credit our current code you can see that we really don't have a meaningful credit uh, to offer so my recommendation would be that uh, that staff and I work on some potential modeling and look at the fiscal impact because we, you know it, this isn't just going to affect the one utility it's likely to affect both utilities and uh, we don't have enough information tonight you know to make you know meaning you know to have make any decisions about this at all so you know I, I'd really recommend that we do some 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 modeling some fiscal uh, fiscal analysis potentially bring this back to the finance committee for them to look at and then bring it back to the full council sometime after the first of the year. So questions or Mr. Clausen? Just just a comment and I would certainly support your recommendation. I think you know you give us one example here tonight, but if there's two other options available, it'd be nice to be able to see them all together. And I certainly understand the issue that you're trying to deal with and we're trying to provide an incentive for the developers to be able to make the necessary improvements without giving away the farm um, and without putting it onto the backs of our ratepayers. So I would very much and welcome you guys taking a look at it coming up. And I'd like to see like a comparative analysis so we can see with the three options that are you mentioned here tonight, how they would apply both affect the city as well as the developer. Mm -hmm. Well, we ran, we ran through option one and, and right. so there's two other alternatives and uh, you know, certainly we can, we can look at what it would look like for us to build, build out the capital projects ourselves. Um, and then I think on the alternatively, in the credit model, I think there's could be various levels of credit too. So I, I think there's a, a fair, fairly large body of work. I don't know how much of it we're going to get through through the holidays, um, but I think for shortly after the first of the year, I, I would like you know to be able to bring this back to the finance committee to us as a start, 
and then and then bring it back to the full council if we get concurrence from the finance committee that we're uh, we're on the right track. Councilmember Rosa Pepe, you're you're no. muted. You're muted, Jay. Jay, Sorry. there. I was sitting in the space bar, didn't go anywhere. Uh, no, I was just curious on the timeline for uh, getting this uh, resolved. I know you said bring it back after the holidays through the finance, and I, I agree with your recommendation. I was just curious what the overall timeline would look like. As fast as we can. Nick's got okay. applications sitting on his desk. Okay, so I'm saying it, it, it's a critical item that it, needs to be resolved. It is. It's it's pressing. There's no okay. doubt about it. And I, you know, I'd like to look at it holistically, but we might have to be a, a, an important p. You know, we just went through the exercise of the sewer sewer CFCs. You know, and the the capital project list. We're not done with the water piece. Okay. So, so we might need to tackle one, but recognize that whatever we do with the one is going to affect the other um, when that other body of work is done, because the body of work isn't complete yet on, on the water capital facilities charges. So um, there's some, it'll be but, a fair but amount the concept of is going to be the same regardless con of which utility. Yeah, the concept, you know, and then we might, whatever that ends up being could be could drive then that capital project list over on the other side and could cause us actually to increase the connection charges even farther because we have projects of our own we need to fund following up on jay's comment is it reasonable to hope that we could get this through the finance committee and to the work study in january that would be our goal and uh, it looks like that finance committee is going to get need to be moved to the uh, second Tuesday in January because of the conflict with the utility committee the following week. So that would be our goal to have this before the finance committee the second week and then a week later bring it back to the full council if we can if we can uh, make meaningful progress on this. I was going to offer arm wrestling with Cindy or rock, paper, scissors, one of the two, but... <laughs> All right. Mayor, I also support the look at I'm this. With... <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Councilmember Dean. I was going to say, I support looking at this as well and with the analyses um, and um, nudging development to move to a, a greater share of paying its way. So I think this will be good, good exercise. Yeah, we have to. Okay. Other comments or questions? Okay. With that, we'll. Uh, move on to our committee reports. Um, let me, uh, finance uh, gave its report, I think at the last meeting, when we did the budget, economic. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna raise the issue of, of the scheduling of the meetings and the conflict. So you're suggesting, Rob, that the finance get moved to when? Since the second, the second Tuesday of the month is where we've historically met. It doesn't allow NOAA enough time to get all of the financials done, you know, that uh, being meeting that early in the month, but he'll, he'll have a sales tax report for us. Uh, you know, this is whether he has the rest of the reports done. At well, our, in light of the previous discussion on the CFCs, I think the 12th would be fine if that will work for Beck and it, it works for Sean. I talked about talked to him about it today. Does that work for you, Beck? Yes, it does. Okay. okay. So, Noah, can you get that invite out for that? Yeah. So, we'll move it to January 12th. Yeah. And we want that as our standing meeting the second Tuesday, just so we don't have to, unless it's canceled. Is that? Be the, I'm okay as long as Noah has enough time to prepare some of the reports that he does. I don't want to have the other reports. You'll have a sales tax report for you. I don't want to muddy the waters, but I guess, and Cindy, is there any reason why we just can't switch where utility committee goes to the second and finance goes to the third? Well, for this, for this one, does that leave enough time for the uh, getting ready for the uh, discussion on CFC at the uh, work study? 
That's what I was going to say. For this one, it probably makes sense for us to move to the second, but then maybe if That's what I'm saying, if I buy you an ice cream, Cindy, can we flip flop second to third? To up the ante a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I two, guess two, two scoops. Get Chocolate two. sundae. <laughs> Okay, butterscotch, caramel, that works. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the sewer committee too, you know. I'm keep me in on this one. <laughs> this is getting more expensive. All right. For at least the month of January, I'm hearing that the utility committee meet will meet on the second Tuesday of the, of January, whatever that date is. And the finance committee will meet on the third Tuesday, which is the work study. There is no, there is no backwards. Backwards. We're gonna, backwards. We're, gonna backwards. Keep it, we're gonna keep it the same for January. Finance on the second, utility on the third. February forward, we're gonna switch. Switch it. Oh, okay. Well, okay. that doesn't get, what we were hoping for is an extra week in January <laughs> to get the body of work done for the finance committee. You're giving us only really two weeks to get something done. Right, but you're not giving any time between that body of work and the work study. It's, that is true. That's what I was trying to do was get before the work study so a we could bring in okay. PFP to the council. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll stick with what we just, what you guys said. I didn't say anything. <laughs> all right. All right, clear as mud. Yeah. So this is an opportunity where we can legitimately ignore you, Mayor, is that it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Economic development tourism is tomorrow night, I believe. Tomorrow evening is the meeting. Nick? No, that was the one. That, that's uh, land use is tomorrow night. Economic development tourism was canceled. Correct. Right. We will for, the, for the December meeting. Correct. Utilities is January 19th. Just, we just solved that. And land use is tomorrow night. Transportation is on the 26th. And lodging tax, do you have anything to report, Jay? Just in February, we'll have a meeting. You'll have a, okay. And is there anything going on with chimes and lights? Okay. So there were no chimes in chimes and lights, right? And we're working on that, but we've got to really get the chimes to play. So we waited at noon and five and seven. No chimes, just saying. But Public Works, kudos to them for all the beautiful lights they put up and the great job in solving all the problems downtown. Um, and I hope you all get down there to see the trees and what the port has done, Kitsap Bank. It was just a quiet event this year. It's so really beautiful. Hmm? It never played? Nothing. Mark, what's going on? <clears throat> I have no idea. Uh, Mike DeLine had done a, a number of test runs. I heard it working just fine. Well, we, we all heard the tests that were going on all day long. I, I, I have Though no. that wasn't all day long, but it was fun. <laughs> just <laughs> testing. I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's just Murphy's Law, I guess. Okay. Well, can we make sure it works on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? No, no. No, I think we need to actually have it work before then because it'll be another. I think we should start working on it again this week to make sure. Okay, well, okay. You, five o'clock time. I'll, I've contacted Mike. All right, you and Mike work it out. Yep. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see here. I got to get to outside agencies. I know there's stuff to report. Uh, yeah. All these screens going on here. Um, let's see here. KRCC, you know, um, I just want to thank Beck. Uh, you know, Beck is going to be the chair again uh, of the executive board at KRCC. And uh, she does a, a lot of heavy lifting and transportation for our city and for our region. And I don't know if others know that she's also the chair of the Peninsula RTPO, uh, as well as uh, being the chair of KRCC, executive, KRCC board and executive board uh, this, this next year. So uh, I do. 
John, John does, I do, and I just wanted to, to acknowledge it. She, she does, uh, you know, I constantly get compliments from other leaders uh, in, in Kitsap County and, and, and around the region uh, for the work that Bex does. So, so thank you, Beck, and we will give you a round of applause. Here, here. So, uh, um, COVID, I, I guess this is in the, you know, you know, we're aware of the businesses that are opening in, in violation of the governor's order. And, and while I'm disappointed, we don't have any enforcement authority. You know, the governor did just recently extend uh, his, his order to January 4th. And if you're following the news, uh, there's a restaurant in Chehalis that's being fined and there's currently threats of criminal charges. And I just don't wanna see that happening in our community. So um, I just hope cooler heads prevail in all of this stuff. So um, there's also State Department, you know, we had our CARES Act grants. There's currently $20,000 grants for uh, businesses being impacted uh, by COVID or, or then the shutdown. So those are through the State Department of Commerce and we have information on our website. There's information on Kita's website and I encourage our business, our businesses did very well in our local grants and I'd like to see some of those business, our local businesses get some of these state grants too. So it's free money and uh, unlike some of the other programs where you potentially have to pay it back. So um, we had our community center kickoff and Ryan is going to give us a presentation in January about Facebook um, uh, boosting. And uh, Janine shared with me, I think it was today or yesterday, a, a positive comment from somebody in the public. They sure hope that uh, these Zoom, when things get back to normal, that these Zoom meetings continue. And I think in some form of streaming, I think we need, you know, we're, we're, uh, we are doing some technology upgrades in the council chamber. And that's my goal is for us to be able, even if we are in meeting live, to be able to live stream our meetings uh, to the public. Cause I think we're getting a lot more participation than we've had historically. So, which is a good thing. Um, that is all that I have. And department heads. Uh, what's the clerk's office? Have anything to report? Not, not too much to report. So uh, you guys do get Brandy back next Tuesday. She will be here for the meeting. Um, so other than that, so just in case I don't see anybody, you guys have a good Christmas, good rest of the year. And we're, the clerk's office is very busy right now. We're just keeping doing what we're doing. Oh, while I'm thinking about it for uh, department directors, um, if you can kind of do your annual website look, uh, just double check your website pages for your department. Let me know of any changes or updates that you would need um, in council. If you guys want to go ahead and, you know, maybe check out your bio, see if there's anything you want to get updated, you can let me know. Um, so other than that, that's all I have. It's like replacing the battery on your fire, to fire yeah. yep. detector, you know, <laughs> once a year you should do that and look at your bio on, on the web page too. So, Charlie, you have anything from? Yeah, so uh, as part of the large rollout of orders from the governor today, um, there was an extension of the proclamation related to the OPMA and the Public Records Act, and that um, the OPMA suspension has been extended to January 19th of next year. So uh, we'll look for um, further action on it in the new year. So we are under the same conditions until at least January 19th. At least January. All right. Uh, Noah, finance. Uh, I don't think I have any special announcements other than we're headed into closing out 2020. We're trying to close out the audit with uh, the state auditor's office over the next month or so. So uh, busy trying to account for everything at the end of the year. And to all my directors, make sure to check your budgets very carefully tomorrow. Um, next week is our, the last opportunity to do any budget amendments. And thus far, I've been monitoring everybody's budgets and everyone's on track. So um, I don't anticipate any budget amendments coming forward. Um, but um, please let me know if there's any big expenditures that you're aware of that haven't been recorded or that I'm not aware of. Okay. Mr. Bond. Nothing to report tonight. Wow. Silence. Chief Brown. 
Uh, nothing much. We're just holding the line until uh, our DC to B gets uh, plugged in on the 3rd of January. Okay. Mr. Dorsey? No, other than anybody that's going to miss this Wolfman Jack look, I think I'm going to trim the beard tonight. So no, <laughs> no Wolfman Jack. No Wolfman Jack. All right. So Debbie, since you're here, you have anything from HR to report? Not tonight, sir. Thank you. Okay. Fawcett, I know you don't work for the city, but you're part of our community. Do you have anything to share from the fire department? Uh, hey, uh, we are, thank you for letting me be here. I was just looking for my video. There it is. Uh, thanks for letting me be here. And uh, I would just remind uh, the city, we did have Santa Claus was coming around this last weekend. And uh, he's kind of, he's staying in the fire engine this year. And um, it's kind of been successful. We'll be out in McCormick Woods area this weekend, but that's uh, been very successful. And so um, kind of a different year we're pulling through, but we uh, certainly thank you for our partnership here and council, thank you for the uh, support on the Navigator. Uh, we look forward to seeing that work in the future. Thanks for joining us, Chief. Thank you. Okay, I, I'll call for citizen comments, but I don't see any members of the public. So with that, I will, uh, are we, st we're still having an executive session, aren't we, Charlie? Uh, no, good, no. I don't believe we were. Okay, all right. I thought we noticed one, but that's okay. I thought, I thought, okay. I thought we did. Uh, develop, uh, there was a development you're gonna talk about. I thought we were. Okay, I apologize. Starts with a letter S. Nick, were we going to update? It was noticed. Okay, then we will. Yes, it will be brief. <laughs> it will be brief then. We will have a 10 minute executive session then. And Janine, you can stop the recording and then we'll just wait for our guests to leave. And uh, we will take no action.